Retina Rounds, episode number 12, Sub-ILM Hemorrhage. Here, guest surgeon Professor Hani Hamza from Cairo, Egypt, presents the surgical steps for evacuation of sub-ILM hemorrhage. We want to thank Dr. Hamza for contributing this case. So here's our patient. She's a 21-year-old woman with a history of severe repeated vomiting over the course of a day prior to presentation. And when she presented, she had decreased vision in the right eye with a visual acuity at baseline of 20 over 200. She was diagnosed with a sub-ILM hemorrhage and then monitored over the course of three weeks with no improvement. And so the decision was made to take the patient to the operating room for surgical evacuation of the hemorrhage. So you can see here Dr. Hamza is injecting some triamcinolone to stain the posterior hyloid. And using the vitreous cutter, he's um, uh, engaging the uh, hyloid over the optic nerve and inducing a PVD. Now you can see here, uh, as the PVD is being elevated, the hemorrhage is staying uh, where it is uh, in the sub-ILM space. And sometimes it can be difficult to distinguish a sub-ILM hemorrhage from a sub-hyloid hemorrhage. Um, this maneuver obviously um, uh, confirms that this is a sub-ILM hemorrhage. But other clues that you might be able to use fundoscopically to distinguish the two uh, would include a, a sheen overlying uh, the hemorrhage, a dome-shaped appearance, and the lack of movement of the hemorrhage with uh, dependent head positioning. Uh, OCT can also be helpful uh, to visualize the ILM and the overlying uh, hyloid in these cases. So you can see Dr. Hamza is, um, has uh, injected some tissue blue or brilliant blue uh, to stain the ILM. Uh, and now he's using the vitreous cutter to try to engage uh, and lift up the ILM overlying the hemorrhage. It appears though that this, uh, this, uh, the ILM is a little bit too taut and so now he's going to ILM forceps to uh, initiate a peel of the ILM overlying the hemorrhage. Um, you can see that strip of, uh, of uh, stained ILM uh, coming up as he's, uh, as he's uh, removing or unroofing the ILM over the, uh, the hemorrhage. You can see here he's uh, just peeling, uh, peeling around the ILM. Interesting to see the, uh, the whitening at the edge of the, uh, of the hemorrhage, sort of delineating uh, the edge of where this uh, ILM hemorrhage uh, was or is. And now uh, you can see as the, um, as the ILM is being completely uh, unroofed over the hemorrhage, the, there's a little bit of uh, mobility of the hemorrhage. It's now um, easily accessible uh, for, uh, for removal. This is a really beautiful ILM peel here. And so with the cutter, he's going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, aspirate the, the hemorrhage. And you can see it's uh, slowly coming here. Now, the reason to remove the hemorrhage in these cases is because uh, there is a, a, a hypothesis that the blood itself may be cytotoxic uh, to the retina. Uh, also, any recruited macrophages that break down this hemorrhage can um, also encourage the formation of an epiretinal membrane, which can obviously distort the macular anatomy and potentially compromise the patient's final visual outcome. So uh, surgical evacuation here is certainly a good option. Uh, and there are other options too, um, including uh, observation for a period of time if it's a mild uh, sub-ILM hemorrhage, or even um, using a YAG laser to uh, puncture a hole in the ILM and allow egress of that um, sub-ILM hemorrhage. You can see here now just finishing up removal of the hemorrhage. And, and you, can, you can appreciate over the macula sort of an area of whitening uh, that corresponds to the area of the hemorrhage. Here's a post-operative image. You can see uh, the patient's had a very nice uh, uh, anatomic result. And the patient's post-operative vision is 20-20. So here are your take-home points uh, for sub-ILM hemorrhage management. The causes of sub-ILM hemorrhage can include a number of factors, including most typically Valsalva retinopathy. This is usually seen in younger patients. Certainly Tursen syndrome, blood dyscrasias, retinal arterial macroaneurysms, and trauma can all result in uh, sub-ILM hemorrhage. Uh, the prompt uh, treatment uh, of uh, these sub-ILM hemorrhages can help to prevent retinal toxicity uh, as well as ERM formation and other complications that could potentially compromise the patient's visual outcome. And the management options here include observing milder hemorrhage, sub-ILM hemorrhages. Um, sometimes uh, a YAG uh, laser can be used to puncture a hole in the ILM. That allows for egress of, of the hemorrhage. The advantage of using laser in these cases is that it can save a patient a trip to the operating room and typically is readily uh, accessible in a clinical setting. Uh, and uh, one can also rapidly uh, confirm whether or not um, the hemorrhage uh, will egress once the ILM is punctured. The risk of using laser in these types of cases, however, includes inadvertent damage to the retina, uh, especially in more shallow sub-ILM hemorrhages, uh, as well as uh, the potential for uh, inducing a retinal tear and detachment. The uh, hemorrhage that egresses also may uh, obscure the patient's vision even more and may take more time uh, for, uh, for visual recovery. 
Surgical evacuation would be the definitive treatment in these cases and is typically reserved for uh, more severe sub ILM hemorrhages that don't uh, improve with observation. Uh, and as is demonstrated in this case, can really result in excellent uh, both anatomic and visual outcomes. We want to thank again uh, Professor Hamza for sharing this very interesting case. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.